Welcome to my YouTube channel Mukesh Tech Hub. So in the first part we have seen the CNN architecture and uh, the architecture which I'm going to use for the digits recognition using the CNN in the practical session. So so far we have seen the uh, all the components uh, those are going to use in the uh, digits recognition and this is the time where we have to look on the data part. So let's create one the Excel uh, sorry this uh, Jupyter notebook and we'll look on the data side. So for your information I'm going to use this MNIST data set from this TensorFlow. So this is the official URL which you also can experience and uh, just have a better look on this uh, data so you can understand how what about the data how it looks like what is the dimension and all so you can see this data is split uh, the test and train size right so test examples are 10,000 and training samples are the 60,000 here right and you can see this feature structure this is the feature dict this is the dictionary inside that image and label identified as image and label and you will see the shape of the images is 28 by 28 by 1 so why here one is because we are using the gray scale images so when if you will see these images 410 these are the digits right and these are gray scale if we are using the uh, colored one then instead of here one it should be three because a colored images has red green and blue channels right all right so now let's download this data share to our jupyter notebook and uh, we'll see about the data so for importing and downloading the data we have to import the relevant libraries right so let's import the required libraries import tensorflow stf right so this is the standard library for using the tensorflow and for the data set let's import tensorflow underscore data sets as tfds right so i'm importing these two required libraries for performing the digits okay so i just imported these uh, two library it will take some time because it's importing this data set right now what we have to do we have to download the data set and we have to pre-process so before continuing with our model and training our first job is to pre-process the data set this is a very important step in all of machine learning the MNI, MNIST data set is in general highly processed already right so after all it's 28 by 28 grayscale images of clearly visible digits thus our pre-processing will be limited to scaling the pixel values shuffling the data and creating a validation set right so what we have to do now we have to download the data set so before downloading the data set we have to configure some variables those we are going to use throughout the project so generally in a practical when we are doing dealing with the client and all so in that project structure we are uh, creating some a constant file and we are putting all the required configurable parameters hyper parameters or constant to that file so shake of simplicity what i'm doing i'm just adding some pair configurable parameter here so i will tell you why i'm adding here okay and uh, what where we are going to use these constants let's say buffer size then let's say batch underscore size let's say uh, 128 and uh, number of pick epoch equals to 20 right so these are the constant variables that i'm going to use in the project now this is the time uh, we need to download the data set 
so we are going to use the load function okay that comes from the tfds okay so if you will do the shift and tab here it will show the signature of this load function what kind of argument it will accept okay so it says it required name so let's say name equals to we are going to use mnist right there is even different parameter with underscore info equals to true what does this mean if we are setting true with underscore info that means while downloading the data set it will also download the metadata about the data the complete information of the data right and uh, let me set one more parameter as supervise equals to true okay so I have downloaded the data set with with underscore info equals to true so just to hold it to train and test what I'm going to do mnist underscore data set and mnist underscore info equals to right so this load function what it will do it will download the entire data set to the mnist data set and if i'm doing with underscore info equals to true that means it also download the metadata about the data right so let me execute this cell right now we have downloaded the data set from this tensorflow directory right now we have to extract the train and test data set so let me note down some comment or better let me put the mark down here extract and sorry extract train and test data set right for extracting let me show you one more thing let me print this MNIST data set you will see here this test and train these are the part of dictionary right test and train these are the part of the dictionary so what we have to do MNIST underscore data set we have to divide the data into the train and test right train comma MNIST data set of test right and same thing we have to hold to a variable mnist underscore train and mnist underscore test equals to is that clear right so what i did i just splitted the data from this dictionary to the relevant variable so here mnist data set train to holding to the mnist train and mnist test to the mnist test variable right right so logically you think we have separated the data within the train and test from the dictionary now after the getting the data what should be the logical next step right because this data should be in a linear fashion right it should be in a in a co in 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 a uh, it should be in a limit right data should be in a proper scale so for scaling it we have to create a function why this function is required that i will tell you in the just next step so let me define one function name uh, let's name it as a scale it will accept the two argument image and label right what we have to do image equals to tf dot cast right we have to pass the image and tf dot float 32 right in the next step image divide equals to 255 so why 255 the pixel of the images 
that ranges between 0 to 1 so just to make it between 0 to 1 we have to divide it by 255 right so that what that's what we use 255 and after that this function going to return image and label right now this is the only function which we have written here right so just to apply this function on each and every input values those are coming for to the model right so what we have to do we have to use a map function right so what we have to do this is the train data mnist train right so on this variable we have to apply the map function and map function what it accepts it accepts a function right so which function we are going to use we are going to use a scale right and once we will apply the map function on a particular data set or particular variable it will return a different data right so that data we have to hold to a different variable so let's say train and validation underscore data so here I put the name as train and validation data why this name also I chosen here I will tell you the logical reason for selecting uh, this variable name as train and validation instead of a uh, train data because I perform this map of uh, operations map uh, I applied this map function on over the train data right but why I uh, put the name as validation also so I will tell you the reason right same thing we have to apply this scaling on this testing data right so let's say test underscore data equals to test underscore not yeah mnist underscore test dot map and let's pass a scale this function right so this function will return the different data set and that I accepted within the test underscore data a different variable right now guys if you have worked on the ML problems or in the previous ML so you are familiar with the uh, these data sets so when we are training a model we have to divide the data in the training and testing and for a different and for a highly scalable solutions we also choose the validation data set right so validation data is the part of the training data for example if you are if data is 100% right so out of 100% what you will do you are taking 70% as the training data and 30% as a testing data right so from this training data 70% of training data we have to take 10% unseen data that we call it as a validation data so that validation data is also part of this training data 70% so we have to consume or we have to separate 10% from this training data right what should be the 10% we don't know right so just to get the numbers what we have to do as I said it should be the 10% of the training data so let me do some mathematic operation 0 0.1 into mnist underscore info from this we I have to split the train train data and just to get the numerical values let me say num underscore examples right and this I have to let me store it to a variable num underscore validation underscore samples right so what I did here I just took the count so for example if the training data is 70,000 so for 10% for the 70,000 that is size would be 7,000. 
so out of training data i took 7000 number of validation samples right and this number i have to cast it to the integer so num of validation samples equals to tf dot cast right num of validation samples tf dot not tf dot int 64 right let me execute this cell so in this step what i have done i just took the count for this validation data from this training right let me do a full screen so here you will see what i have done here i just took the number total number for this validation for this validation from this train data and i just converted it to the int 64 right so we have defined the size of the validation data now we have to define define the size of test data also right so for defining the size of test data let use mnist underscore info dot splits and we will use test same as num underscore examples and this we have to store it to a different variable num underscore test underscore samples right similar to above we have to convert it to the int 64 so num underscore test sample equals to num underscore sorry it should be tf dot cast right num underscore test samples and int tf dot tf dot int 64 right so from the above we we took the validation data set count of this validation we just took the count total number of count 7000 out of 70000 we took total number of count for the validation data set that is 7000 and from here we just took the count for this testing data set right now what we have to do we we just define the size of the validation and test set and now we have to reshuffle the data set why reshuffling is required because we want a mix of data set right so let's do reshuffle the data so for reshuffling the data if you will see here when we applied the map function when we applied the map function that converted output of the map function we hold in the input variable that is train and validation data right train and validation data so we have to do train and validation data dot shuffle and here the constant which i have created on top of this file that is buffer underscore size right so here I will use this constant buffer underscore size right after that let's assign this uh, conversion to the train and test validation data also right so we have reshuffled the data now we we did the reshuffling we applied the same casting approach using the mechanism okay and uh, the map function and uh, we got the count for the test and the validation samples now we have to split the data into the train and test set so let's say split the data into the train and test so test is already we have so let's say validation right so for that what we have to do train test validation data let me use this variable train and validation data dot escape and from here what i have to do 
num underscore validation underscore samples guys it's a very important what i have done from the train and validation data so this variable contains the combination of the training and the validation data so out of those combination those 70,000 data I'm just skipping the number of validation samples that is 7,000 so remaining data would be train underscore data right it would be train underscore data so I just assigned to the train underscore data variable now what would be the validation data train and validation data dot let me take and what I have to take here number of validation samples and this will I will assign to the VALIG validation underscore data equals to this one. so from this above I got the training data I got the validation data right now now we got reshuffling we got the data splits into the train and validation now if you will see the uh, neural network phenomena where we have to feed the input into the batches right so for proper functioning of the model we need to create one big batch for the validation and test set so let's say what we have to do train underscore data dot batch and if you will do shift and tab it will show you the required parameters or argument for this one so it says it's it required the batch underscore size parameter and from this top i can see already i have defined the batch underscore size so let me define batch underscore size and again let me reassign it to the train underscore data variable right now similar for the validation data validation data dot batch so for the validation data what would be the size when number of validation samples right number of validation samples this is the actual size for this validation data and this where I have to assign it to the validation underscore data variable right similar for the test data so test underscore data equals to test underscore data dot batch and what would be the number of test samples this is clear so far right so so far what I have done here I just imported the library I defined the constant I downloaded the uh, data set from the MNIST okay with info equals to true that means it will download and it will give the metadata about the data then we just splitted the train and test from the dictionary to the MNIST train and test after that I wrote one scale function just making making the input on a same scale and divided by 255 because we are using the gray, gray scale and pixel value it should be ranges between 0, 0 to 1 right and after that I did some uh, uh, minimal operations and identified the validation set right and reshuffled and make the batch for this one so up to all these things are clear now next part would be model creation okay next part would be model creation so this is the pre-processed data that i'm going to use for the model creation so we will see in the next part so thanks for watching and please subscribe my youtube channel mukesh thank you so much guys